Hello, Internet friends. It's Tim Schrock at Design Build Solutions. On today's Tech Tip Tuesday, I want to discuss, address a topic of framing, which a viewer named Larry brought up. So, Larry, this one's to you. Let's get started on our favorite software. Framing. Yes. Uh, so, I have set up this um, model to have automatic framing for the floor and ceiling, walls, and roof. Um, and that means that if I put a door in the front uh, door here, yes, we're going to put display doors, it will frame out the doorway automatically same with a window let's go to put a skylight in here see that skylight automatically opened up typically i don't put i don't use automatic framing um <clears throat> and that's just because most of my work is remodels and additions, and I only want to show the framing where we're doing the work. So that's that's the reason I don't. So I do a lot of like um, area framing, if you will. If, if this were the addition on the back of the house, um, I would model the roof and then just frame show the framing of this section right here. And the framing of these walls and this ceiling and this floor right there wouldn't show the whole property. Now, if you're doing a um, new construction, then automatic framing might make sense. But <clears throat> the question was brought up, how do you deal with these framing members that aren't working properly, right? This is one advantage of automatic framing is that when you make some of these adjustments in the in the model and start putting in the parameters you can see what's actually happening live real time here so let's do i'm going to do a dollhouse view and turn off this one and i'm going to turn on the framing floor joists and uh, da, da, headers Roof rafters, wall, yeah, all of that. Roof blocking, roof beams, rim joists. Don't need the labels. General. Floor blocking. Okay. There. <clears throat> so. Let's say, right, I want to put a beam. Um, but Chief Architect did choose the shortest uh, uh, span here, but then it goes to the longest span here. We need to show that there's a beam across here and then switch directions, right? Um, if I were just to move this wall across this way, Interesting that it does not, up. I thought we did automatic. Hmm. Oh, it, it does recognize that the majority, it, see how it changed directions? There's more area that's shorter this direction than this one, so we we in this case we'd want it to to show a beam here, but I'm I'm going to uh, change this back to the way it was. Ah, uh, see, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's go back to this. So let's put a bearing line across where we want this, and see what that does. I'm going to build uh, framing. Oh, I'm in camera view, so I need to go back to plan view. Build framing. Uh, da, 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 bearing line, just right across here, 
and you'll notice it it broke the uh, joist so we're not continuous span all the way across that's great it shows it here as well um, but it's that's not a beam that's not what we're really wanting all right so let's um let's do this if i pull this down here no nope. all right i'm going to delete that and that's not what I wanted, really. So I'm going to draw a build framing floor ceiling beam across there. That could work. <clears throat> that could work. But what if I wanted to change directions of the joists? These work, work fine here, but I want to change this one to that direction. Uh, let's do build framing. Oh, back to plan view. Build uh, framing and joist direction. So let's change these joists to go this direction. Well, now they all changed. What happened? So by default, Chief Architect is going to select the shortest span that, that has the most area, which in our model was this one here. Okay, and then it they all just went this direction. Okay, by adding a one joist direction arrow, it overrides the default and now follows this direction. It follows this input. So all the joists are going this way, even across the breaking beam or, or line. So what we have to do is we have to sh draw a line, a joist direction line on both sides of the beam or the uh, break line like that. So now Chief says, here's a break line. On this side, I want to go this direction. On this side, I want to go this direction. I do notice something here, though, as I look It's putting this double, double um, joist here away from the rim. So I might have to move this beam up here. Let's make that flush with the rim joist. Yeah, there we go. Got rid of that. And there's your... There's your floor joist. So let's go up to second floor. Uh, we could make this, let's change this into a uh, bearing wall. I think we can do that, right? Uh, structure. Bearing wall. Yes, let's make this an interior wall. And by making this a bearing wall, now notice that the ceiling joists break over that, right? It's not a continuous um, uh, ceiling joist. We can change the direction once again. But notice, just like before, we have to give it direction on both sides of the bearing member, whether that's a bearing line or a beam or a wall. We have to give the directions on both sides. We go up a level here. Let's turn on the framing. Let's turn off roof rafters and let's turn on ceiling, joists and blocking. So now you can see how the um, it's important to set up in the model what's bearing and then what is um, what the directions are on all sides of that bearing. If we were to, let's say, put a bearing line. Let's build a bearing line over here. Just for giggles. Like this. And I could make my joist direction, turn here, no problem. 
Now I've got this bearing line sets apart this section from this section. And this bearing wall right here sets apart that third section. So I need a joist direction in each of those sections, or it's just going to um, create whatever the last input was. This bearing line has no value at this point because there's not an additional joist direction input. As soon as I put one there, it'll create that. All right, um, let's see if we go to roof, framing roof. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't, there's not really a joist, a roof direction. It just follows the pitch. Uh, what you might have to do, what you do have to get into um, might be some, if some special items with roof, if you do roof trusses. Um, you do have this case now where, let's turn on the roof planes. By default, this roof created a structural valley. So we might have to manually move that roof uh, plane to where it's, this is an automatic roof. So I'm going to um, turn off auto rebuild roofs and change the shape here. Now I'm gonna have to select this and let's do my did it, roof over framing case so that it builds in that valley shoe there. And let's do this. We're gonna turn this off and just do A framing overview so you can see the rafters do indeed come down and rest on that wall here and it has built in that valley shoe right there so that would be with stick built there's some uh, unique things i think i've done a, a video on this before i'll take a look back with roof trusses um, so that's all I can think of for right now. I hope that's helpful. Thanks so much for following along. Click like and subscribe down there in the notification bell. Do be watching for a new, uh, a new project coming out very soon. I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much. Have a great week. Take care. Bye-bye.